Okay, time to start our retrofit reconnaissance. For the remainder of this video, we will be talking about how to identify retrofit opportunities in the field and showing you basic information you will collect to help assess what type of retrofit might work in a selected location. Our location today is a university parking lot. This site was chosen for several reasons. First of all, it is a large expanse of impervious cover, so therefore a potential contributor of pollutants to our watershed. Second, there are large grassy open spaces nearby, which increase our chances of finding space to install a retrofit. And third, since it is a university lot, convincing the owner to make significant changes to the site may be easier than if the site were on private property. It's important to be prepared and efficient while conducting a field assessment. In order to collect the necessary site information, but also save time in the field, there are several things you should bring along on your trip. These include an aerial photograph. This will give you a bird's eye view of the site and a place to draw both existing conditions and your retrofit ideas. Sometimes, detailed GIS mapping for the site may be available. Otherwise, online mapping programs such as Google Maps or Bing can be used to print an aerial image. A camera to document what you see. The retrofit reconnaissance field form. Using a standard form to document information creates consistency between sites and ensures that all necessary information will be obtained and documented. Tape measure and 100 foot tape for measuring culverts, inlet depths, or retrofit dimensions. Basic first aid kit. And something that is essential is a retrofitting partner. It's always good to have someone with you in case something unforeseen happens. Having a partner will also speed the process of data gathering and may provide you with other ideas or points of view on a proposed retrofit. By the way, holy gloves are not an essential piece of equipment, but they might add a certain bit of authenticity to your retrofitter outfit. It sounds overly simple, but the first step in assessing a site for a stormwater retrofit is to determine where the water is going. Here, the retrofit team found the high point of our parking lot and are following the flow path runoff would take to the edge of the parking lot. Following the existing flow paths will tell you where water collects, where it exits from the site, and where the best opportunities for retrofits exist. Once the runoff reaches the edge of the parking lot, it travels down a grass channel that runs alongside the roadway. This channel conveys runoff from the lot into a stormwater management pond. Clearly not the most beautiful wet pond in the world, but it appears to be functioning for its intended purpose of flood control and may be providing some water quality benefits as well. Water is conveyed from the pond underneath the street and to an outlet located in a grassed area across the street. From there, water is conveyed along a grass channel into a nearby receiving stream. It is evident that the channel is starting to erode just downstream of the outlet. What should be a smooth grass channel is forming a gully and could easily continue to erode and become a greater problem if nothing is done. Despite the gully's appeal to the local wildlife, it has the potential to be adding unwanted sediment to the stream. The field team also noticed that some runoff from the adjacent roadway bypasses the stormwater pond and flows directly to the outlet. This untreated roadway runoff is conveyed through the eroding channel directly into the stream carrying with it any pollutants that get picked up from the roadway surface. Now we know where the water goes, what's happening along the way, and can sketch it on the aerial photo. Runoff flows off the parking lot in two different directions to grass channels. The grass channels then empty into a stormwater pond. The outlet of the pond is across the road, where the runoff flows through another grass channel before making its way to a stream. This third grass channel is where the erosion problems were noted. It's time to consider what retrofits might work. There are several opportunities to design on-site retrofits here. For example, we could propose that bioretention parking islands be incorporated into the parking lot. Another option could be to retrofit the grass swales to promote infiltration and improve water quality by replacing the underlying soil media and planting native landscaping in the channel. However, inspection of the site revealed that, by design, Runoff from the parking lot is already being treated by the stormwater pond. If we were to propose these on-site treatments, 
the parking island or grass swale retrofits, we would, in essence, be duplicating treatment of the parking lot runoff, which is not likely to be the best use of limited watershed restoration resources. It is generally better to propose a retrofit in an area that receives no existing treatment or in an area where a problem is noted. At this particular site, a better location for a stormwater retrofit would be below the outlet of the pond. Here, we will be able to treat both the untreated runoff from the road and the erosion problem in the swale. With a decision made, the field team proceeded to make the measurements they will need and develop a design concept for the area. They envision a series of check dams with widened and excavated areas behind them, similar to bioretention areas, that would store and treat the stormwater runoff. They have indicated their proposed retrofit on the aerial photograph, and their measurements will allow them to draw up an accurate plan when they return to the office. It is important to make sure that the key site and design elements are captured in the sketch, and that the drainage area to the proposed retrofit location is clearly marked. This will make it easy to perform sizing calculations when back in the office. Here are a few examples of what a design like this might look like. This one is a smaller site in Charlottesville, Virginia. And here is a before and after of a coastal plain outfall retrofit in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. One additional thing to consider when retrofitting is the feasibility of the project. We must consider what the project will involve and whether or not the landowners, in this case the university, will be open to doing the project. For example, this space may be a location for a future building or parking lot expansion. If so, then we should find this out before we spend time and effort continuing to design this project. Right now, the area appears to be unused. It will be important for us to follow up with campus about future use of this area. 